Hello and welcome to another Eiffel Science interview. I'm Dr. Alfredo Carpinetti. I'm of Eiffel Science Senior Science Writer and it is my great pleasure to have Professor Jim Akhlili with us today from the University of Surrey. And he's going to talk to us about the secrets of size. Professor, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Wonderful. Would you like to start telling us a little bit about yourself and your work? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm I'm a theoretical physicist, so I work with equations and computer programs and mathematics, uh, studying essentially in my day job as an academic professor, I'm studying the world of quantum mechanics, so the world of subatomic particles. Uh, and this is an, an area of research that I've been involved in for many years. But I'm also a science communicator and an author, so I spend half of my time explaining some of these complicated ideas that I've been thinking about. Thank you so much. And seriously, thank you so much for all the work uh, you do in uh, bringing science to the public. Uh, and that's why we're here today, uh, because uh, uh, you have a new uh, documentary on the secrets of size. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about it? Uh, Yes, so this is a, a two-part documentary on BBC4, uh, which is the channel that I enjoy making documentaries for most because it allows me to get stuck into some of the details of, of, of the science. This new two-parter, uh, Secrets of Size, the full title is Secrets of Size from Atoms to Super Galaxies. So it's in two parts, the very small and the very big. Uh, and I've really enjoyed exploring some of these concepts. There's, a, there's, there's some CGI in there as well, but essentially it's about the limits of what we can see. Now, of course, what we can see with our eyes is very limited, but thankfully in science, centuries ago, we invented the microscope to see the small, and we invented the telescope to see the very far away. So uh, in episode one, we, we go down to smaller and smaller scales to see how far we can go. And it gets more and more weird, more and more exciting as we go. In episode two, we go large. So we start out with the solar system and the planets around the sun expanding out to our Milky Way galaxy and then out to clusters of galaxy and all the way to the, the, the largest things we can comprehend, which make up a, fr a big fraction of the known universe. So again, very mind numbingly sort of exciting areas, which I know a lot of people are very interested in. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question on the very small. Let's start with that. Uh, uh, was there something that surprised you, even in your sort of historical uh, journey through the different stages of uh, reaching uh, uh, to mm. be able to see the very small or even in the current uh, limits uh, of what uh, uh, electron microscopes can achieve is there was something that uh, you didn't expect to see before you started uh, uh, the documentary there was there were certainly surprises so so uh, for example uh, when we get down to the level of individual layers of atoms a, um, a material called graphene which is just sing a single atom of carbon thick and it has some weird and wonderful properties um, we create or we <laughs> I, I i talk to researchers who've created the blackest material in the universe so black that it's that it, it, you shine light on it and it just still looks black. Uh, uh, so fascinating stuff to, to, to get my head around. But I think for me, the most profound thing uh, uh, that, that I saw, which I think I was sort of expecting, but it still moved me. And that was to see an individual atom under an electron microscope. Electron microscopes are the most powerful magnifiers we have, much more powerful than any optical microscope. And they allow us now the technology is such that we can see down to individuals. So it's just seeing an atom, for me as a physicist, you know, I was trying not to, you know, my eyes trying not to fill up with tears as I'm <laughs> as I'm watching this thing. This is an absolutely profound moment for me. I completely sympathize uh, uh, when uh, there was uh, the release of the Sagittarius A star supermassive black holes image. Uh, 
couldn't help but like I was writing and I was uh, tearing up because it gets such an emotional <laughs> moment uh, in science when you have uh, imagined or work on something and uh, you suddenly see it. Um, on yeah. the other side of the, the size, uh, uh, in episode two, was there something that uh, made you go, whoa? Well, I mean, uh, you mentioned Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy that only astronomers have only now been able to image. Um, I interviewed an astrophysicist by the name of Andrew Fabian, and he studies black holes. And one of the wonderful things I learned from him is that black holes can send what are essentially sound waves outside of them, traveling through interstellar gas. And these sound waves are so deep, it's the deepest note in the universe. More than 50 octaves, if you know your music, more than 50 octaves below middle C. Um, it's a sound. I mean, obviously, we as humans would never be able to hear it, but it is. It's, it's sort of a sound wave moving, moving through diffuse interstellar material. So the fact that black holes can create the deepest sound in the universe was something I, I wasn't aware of. And uh, to recreate that sound, so well, we can recreate it on um, a, for a church organ, for example, you know, with the, with the windpipes. But the the windpipes of the organ would have to be so long in order to contain a single wavelength of the sound. The organ would be have to be the size of the solar system. <laughs> That's just ridiculous numbers we were talking about here. Very fascinating stuff. Wow, talking about uh, uh, the music of the spheres. Indeed, the music of the black holes. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you also have, uh, um, you're starting a new series of uh, The Life Scientific, right? Yes, so this is my us, radio four series. Yeah. Want to tell us a little bit uh, more if you have yes. like expected guests or, uh, or teasing us something? Okay, well, I can certainly do that. So, I mean, so this is the life science that's been going. This is now in its 11th year. I've interviewed over 250 of, of the world's best scientists, Nobel Prize winners uh, among them. Uh, and uh, the series comes in blocks throughout the year. It's 24 episodes a year, but in, in, in blocks of seven or eight episodes. The new series starts in a couple of weeks. My, my first guest is actually an engineer, but also a member of parliament. Her name is Chi Onwara, uh, and uh, she's a, a Labour member of parliament. But she, fascinating, as a, as a black working class woman growing up on a council estate in Newcastle, and then going into a male dominated subject like engineering, clearly it was tough for her. But she was the person who set up the very first mobile phone network in Nigeria. And she tell, talks about some of the, the achievements she's done in engineering, even before she entered politics. So it's a very interesting person to talk to. The one message she has is that we don't have enough politicians who have a background in science or engineering. And you know, we know in today's world with the challenges facing us, whether it's climate change, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's the advances in technology, we need our politicians and our leaders to have an understanding of science. So uh, her message was very strong. She's just one of many guests. I, I, talk, I will be talking to uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, by the name of Vladko Vedral, who's a quantum physicist. He's working on developing quantum computers. So we're gonna get very geeky about quantum physics and quantum computers in that one. Um, I'm looking forward to the, the, the new series. Well, just based on those two guests, uh, it sounds gonna be fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. And talk to you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.